you how to do a painting of a simple sphere in Photoshop. I'm going to be using a Wacom drawing tablet. Uh, and the drawing tablet gives you the ability to use a paintbrush and have pressure sensitivity as you're working. Okay, so I'll show you how to set that up and use it. I'm just going to create a 4 inch by 4 inch 300 pixel per inch document and hit create. And basically, I'm going to set up my paintbrush first. So I'm going to choose my paintbrush. By the way, the shortcut for the brush is B, brush tool. Uh, you can set your brush. I'm just using a round, all the way soft brush. Um, and you can change the size as you work. There's a couple other settings I'll show you once I get started. But the first thing I'm going to do is make a circle with the elliptical marquee tool. I'll pretty much center it. And on a new layer, I'm going to fill that with whatever the base color for my sphere is going to be. So I'll make it eh, kind of a reddish color. So I'm going to fill that by pressing Option Delete. And you could use a shape layer to do this part as well. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but what I'm going to do next is make another new layer. So I'm going to lay uh, name layer 1 base because that that's gosh. Base. Base. More base. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be my base color or underpainting kind of color. And this is going to be shading and stuff. I'll just call it shading. It's really shading and highlights. Um, I'll lump those together on the same layer. But this is where I'm going to start using my drawing tablet. So what I want to do is create my highlights, my shadows for my sphere. And if you don't know what the shading for a sphere should look like, go ahead and Google it. What does shading on a sphere look like? Uh, but basically, uh, if you're in my class, you should know that there is a handout available. I'll show that to you real quickly. Come on, downloads. Sphere, let's see, shading right here. So this kind of gives you the five elements of shading and with a little diagram that shows you your full light, which is five. Number five is white. That's basically the direction the light is coming from. It strikes this. It's going to be brightest right there, full white. Okay, And as it moves out from there, it's going to get slightly darker. It's going to go to a 4, and then a 3, and then a 2, and a 1 underneath the object. 1 is basically the cast shadow. Okay, You also have some 4 down here. This is reflected light. If it's sitting on a surface that reflects light, you're going to get some light bouncing back up onto the bottom or underneath part of the sphere. Okay, So notice how it's different from a cylinder. A cylinder has linear shading, kind of like a line going here, you see a line here, you see a line here. Um, yeah, so definitely refer to this if you need to. Okay, so back in Photoshop, I've got my drawing tablet. I'm going to change a few settings with my brush. So like I said, I set it to kind of a large size, 95 pixels, with a very soft edge all the way soft. And I'm going to open up my brush settings. Okay, that's from this little thing here. The default settings you're going to have typically will be that size jitter is controlled by pen pressure. Okay, What that does, just to show you, it means if I press very gently, lightly on the drawing tablet, it makes a smaller line. If I press harder, it gets bigger. Okay, I'm not a fan of shape dynamics or size jitter for pen pressure. What I like to do is turn that off and turn on transfer and set both the opacity and the flow jitters to pen pressure. What that does is it, the harder I press, the faster the pixels or the quote unquote paint is going to come out 
and change what I'm doing. So I can go very gently and kind of build it up. Okay. Now, if I don't want to paint with white, I could go with a very light pink. This is kind of a... So then it's never going to get white here in the this area where I'm painting. It's going to get lighter, but not all the way white. Okay. So at some point I may want white in that, that very center of that highlight. I could change that. I can also change my brush size if I want to make it a little more controlled area. Okay, something like that. Uh, but then I'm going to change to like a darker version. I'm not going to go to black on the shape itself. I will use just the deep version of my pink. So it's very dark. Basically, I'm creating this, this shadow that wraps around the object because it's a round object. It has that kind of rounded shading. It's a little stuttery. I'm not sure why it's not a smoother paint action as I'm painting. But notice I'm leaving this kind of light underneath. That's that reflected light. A little dark on the edge. I might be going a little too dark, but once again, I can always paint over it. I can bring lighter color. It's still making it darker, but not as dark. The other thing, shortcut that's useful is the option key. If you press and hold the option key while you're using the brush tool, it gives you the eyedropper. So you can grab a color that you've already got and kind of blend it a little bit by painting over it, smoothing it out. So that's really helpful. Um, the last, well, I might go a little lighter underneath. Just a touch. Okay, my last step is basically to do a cast shadow. So cast shadow is going to be the darkest part of my rendering here. So I'm going to make a new layer underneath my base. And I'll make an elliptical selection. This one's going to be not a perfect circle. It's going to be a stretched out ellipse. And this is just, you know, I don't really need to make this selection, but I like to do it. So I'm going to go to Select, Modify Feather. I'm going to feather this, feathering at 35 pixels. And what that's going to do is just soften the edge of my selection so that when I paint with black, it's not going to get a hard edge. You may want to have it have a hard edge. That's up to you. But look, as I paint under my shape, it'll get nice and black, but it's behind it in the layers panel, so it doesn't really, you know, it looks like the ball of sphere is sitting right on the surface there. I can make my brush bigger, extend that further back. And I'm not painting right up to the edge of the uh, ellipse anyway. Take a little white, bring it back. I feel like it got a little too dark. Like I said, you don't really need that selection, but use it if you want to. That is basically it. Alright, thanks for watching.